Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question minimum number of arrows to burst balloons. Alright, so in this question there are spherical balloons spread in a two dimensional space. For each balloon provided input is the start and the end coordinates of the horizontal diameter. Since it is horizontal, its y coordinates do not matter and hence the x coordinates of start and the end of diameter are enough. Uh, the start is always smaller than the end value that we have. Okay, so, so uh, in simple words, we're given balloons and we know its uh, start value and the end value in terms of horizontal distance. And we actually don't care about vertical distance. And the reason for that is because there is an arrow which can be shot up exactly vertically from different points along the x-axis. A balloon with x start and x end bursts by an arrow shot at x if the... Uh, x value is greater than or equal to the start value or less than or equal to the end value. So what does that mean? So real simply, uh, let's say we have balloons horizontally placed and we're shooting an arrow from underneath and that arrow is going to burst the balloon. And now the question over here is, uh, okay, and one more thing, there's no limit uh, to the number of arrows that can be shot. An arrow once shot keeps traveling infinitely. So it keeps going in that vertical direction and it keeps on going until all the balloons are bursted. Okay, so given an array of uh, points where point i is equal to uh, the start value, comma, the end value, return the minimum number of arrows that must be shot to burst all balloons. All right, so as it is, I think the question is a little bit confusing, but I just want to visualize it. So I think that makes it a lot easier to kind of understand. So over here, I have a quick scale. Uh, it's not obviously it's not equal, but I think it does the job. So we have numbers from 1 through 16. And this over here is going to be representing a horizontal scale. So what I want to do is I'm going to be looking at an example and I will be drawing out the points that we have. So one of the points, and uh, just so you know, I'm following example one. So one point starts at 10, so I'm drawing that here, and it goes all the way up to 16. And these values are inclusive. So this represents the balloon 10, 16. Now it could have a vertical height of whatever, but it really doesn't matter since when we shoot an arrow from the bottom up, it goes up infinitely. So we have 10, 16 here. And I'm just going to draw a few more. So then we have 2, comma, 8. So it starts at 2 and goes all the way up to 8. And let me just label each of these so it's easy to understand. And then one more we have is 1. So we start out over here at 1 and we go all the way up to 6. I'm sorry if the drawings are not exactly correct, but yeah. And finally, we have 7, comma, 12. Okay, so we have 7 over here. And then we're going to go all the way up to 12, which is around there. Okay, so this is 7, comma, 12. Perfect. So each of these red bars represents one balloon. And I'm going to be using the color green to show if an arrow was shot. So what I'm going to do is let's say we shot an arrow at the value 1. So if we shot an arrow at 1, it would go up like this and it would keep going infinitely all the way up to the ending. Now over here, when the arrow goes up, does it hit anything? That's the question. And the answer is yes. So the arrow over here is going to end up hitting the balloon 1, 6. So we can just kind of cross it off and say that this balloon has been hit. So let's say we shoot one more arrow and this time we shoot it at the number 7. So we're shooting it over here. And when we shoot the arrow at number 7, what happens is actually two balloons get bursted. So what's going to happen is the balloon 7, 12 gets bursted and the balloon 2, 8. Oh, sorry about that. So 7, 12 gets bursted and 2, 8 also gets bursted. And the reason for that is because this over here is going through to comma 8. And finally, let's say we're shooting another arrow of 14. Uh, and again, we can shoot how many other arrows we want. Then obviously this over here is going to get burst at 10 comma 16. But now the question that we really want to answer is how can we burst all of the balloons by using the least possible uh, number of arrows? Now, the highest value we can get is going to be the same number as the number of balloons we have. But let's just look at a better way that we can do this. So what I would do over here, we could maybe shoot an arrow at the number four or even five or six or even three or even two actually. So from two all the way to six, we could shoot at anything. I'm just gonna shoot, uh, choose four. So currently I'm gonna shoot, uh, shoot an arrow at four. And what's going to happen when I do that is I'm gonna burst one comma six and I'm also going to burst two comma eight. Similarly over here, uh, you can kind of see that there's an intersection over here and this intersection starts at 10 and it goes all the way up to 12. So if I shoot anything between or including in that range, so let's say I just choose another number 11. 
So if I shoot through 11, this value bursts, and so does this one. So over here, what happened is we were able to burst our balloons using just two arrows. And this is the minimum arrows that we can use in order to burst each and every balloon that we have. So in this case, we're going to have a value of two, and that's what we're going to end up outputting. All right, so over here, we're given the list uh, of uh, start values and end values of each balloon. And this is the same thing as what I drew over here. And what I want to show you is how can we sort our list in a way which makes it easier to find out whether something is in a specific interval or not. And in order to do so, we're going to be sorting these values according to the final or the last ending value that we have over here. So I'll be sorting it according to that, and I'll just do that along with this. So what is the smallest value? The smallest value is 6, and that's what we're going to have first. So we're going to have 1, 6. Then we have 8. Uh, then we have, So that's 2, 8. And then uh, 12, so 7, 12. And finally, we have 10, 16. So I'll be going through this step by step. And oh wait, sorry, okay, that's a 16, and that's 10. Okay, so we'll be having two variables. So one is going to be our count. And well, in simple words, that's what we're going to end up outputting. This is basically the number of arrows we need, okay? So that's the count. That's what we're outputting. It's going to start off at zero. And finally, we're going to be having one more variable. And I'll just call this value the uh, ending point, okay? And this ending point over here is basically going to tell us when the certain interval is ending. But the question is, how do we actually start this value at? So in the beginning, I'll just start it off at negative infinity. And as we move on, we're going to change it. So again, to be more uh, to be clear, we're going to be using this area over here, which is sorted according to the ending values. So in the beginning, we have a value of 1, 6. And what we're going to do at each iteration, we're going to check whether the values that we have over here are inside of the ending value that we have over here, or if it's inside of that interval. So in this case, to do that, we're going to check is 1 greater than this ending value. And it is. So 1 is greater than negative infinity. So in that case, what's going to happen is our count now increases to by 1. So now this is going to become 1. And the ending value is now going to be whatever the ending value is for that certain balloon at that instance. So in this case, the ending value is now going to have a value of 6. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our next balloon. So over here, we're going to check is 2 greater than the ending value, which is 6. And it's not. So 2 is not greater than 6. And what that is telling us is that this value over here is inside of the interval 1, 6. And that perfectly makes sense. As you can see, 1, 6 and 2, 8 is inside of that, right? There is an arrow which can go through both of them, as we can see by the X marks right over here. So basically, that's telling us that one arrow is enough for both of these. So that's perfect. And in that case, we're just going to kind of skip it, right? Nothing's going to happen. Our count doesn't change. Ending doesn't change. But now, let's say we go to the third balloon. Now, at the third balloon, the value that we're starting off at is 7. And 7 over here is greater than the number 6. So in that case, what's going to happen is that this ending value over here is going to get updated to now 12, since that's the ending value of this balloon. And the count is also going to get updated and the value it's going to get updated to is going to increase by 1. So 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Perfect. So 2 and 12. And then finally, we have uh, 10 and 16. And 10 is less than the ending value, which is 12. So in that case, nothing happens as well. And our count ends up being 2, which perfectly makes sense uh, since over here we would have something going through this. And uh, just to kind of, and if you think about this intuitively, it actually makes a lot of sense. So if the starting value is less than the value 6, then obviously we're going to have a balloon which does not need an extra arrow. So similarly, let's say we had something like uh, 3, 4. 3, 4 is less than 6, and it would be right over here. So 3, 4. And that is inside of the interval that we have. So that's all we're going to be doing. It's pretty simple. Uh, hopefully that did make sense. And now let's see how we can actually implement this in code. All right, so let's start off by actually redefining our points variable. So in the beginning, it's just a list, but we want to sort it according to the ending values. And to do that, we could just use the sorted method in Python. And what exactly, sorry, uh, what do we want to sort? So we want to sort the points. And how are we going to sort it? So to do that, we're going to be giving it a, a lambda function. So key is equal to lambda 
x and then uh, we're going to be sorting it according to the ending value so whatever is at the first index so that's what we're, we're going to be sorting it by so now that we have our sorted list we want to just uh, define a few variables before we go inside of the for loop so over here we're going to have our count which is exactly what we're going to end up returning and this count is going to have a value of zero in the beginning and we're also going to have an ending value and this ending value is going to start off at negative infinity so to do that, we can just do float negative inf. Oh, sorry. Float negative inf. There we go. Okay. God, I can't spell. Okay. Uh, so that should be it. And now we're going to go inside of a for loop. And over here, we're going to be getting each of our balloons. So I'll just say for balloon in points. Okay. So this gives us the x comma y. Uh, so balloon basically just holds the x comma y coordinates. And over here, what we're going to do is we're going to check is our starting value for that balloon. So uh, if balloon and the starting value is at the zeroth index, and if this value is greater than our ending value, and the ending value is what we ended up defining over here, and if that is true, then in that case, that means we're going to increase our count by one. So count plus equals one. And one more thing that is going to happen, we're going to update the ending value that we have over here. Now the ending value is going to be whatever the ending value is, for the certain balloon that we're on. And to get that, it's just going to be whatever is at the first index, so balloon 1. And that's really it. And at the very ending of this, we're just going to end up returning the count, which is the number of arrows that were shot. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.